After spending two years over in Japan, I went to gun school in Chicago and then eventually transferred here out here in 88, 89, um, stationed on board what was then the USS Missouri out of Long Beach. Back in 97, I had the LASIK procedure. It didn't go as planned. The throwing out the word of keratoconus had come up in my initial surgery. The number one contraindication for LASIK is keratoconus or signs of keratoconus. And when we do a LASIK evaluation, the majority of the work that we do, the majority of the testing is designed to catch any subtle curvature abnormalities that could be concerning so that we avoid LASIK in those patients. As my vision got worse, I eventually went to my primary eye doctor who referred me to Dr. Song. Mr. Lyons had what's called keratoconus. It's a disorder where, for some reason, you get progression of the corneal uh, thinning that happens. Then over time, it gets ectatic or gets so thin. It's like a tire where it gets so thin in certain areas, they start bulging. As it progresses, keratoconus becomes more warped. The cornea becomes thinner, more protruding, more warped, more irregular in its shape, and it causes significant vision distortion. If it progresses even further, then we cannot correct the vision with any type of normal visual aid, even advanced contacts, and then people need uh, advanced procedures like corneal transplantation. We have done a cornea transplant already in the left eye, um, and just over the period of the last year or so I've just gotten really I'm just really fed up with wearing glasses so um, I came back in I saw Dr. Song and you know they determined that I the character corners in my right eye is getting worse. The textbooks will tell you about one in 2,000 people walking around in the street may have keratoconus. But in fact, the incidence is much higher. Refractive surgeons have known intuitively that it's higher than that for some time. And the patients, as they first have this process, will need glasses, and especially nearsightedness and astigmatism. We have a lot of patients with nearsightedness that don't have keratoconus, so that's not something to be immediately worried about. But increasing astigmatism, very rapid changes in your prescription are things that, that would warrant an evaluation. I like to play a lot of basketball, and your perception of everything changes when you, know, you can't see as clearly as you, you, you would like to. Um, so I don't play as much because I don't wear contacts, but I don't see very well. Crosslinking is brand new to the United States in terms of FDA approval. We've been doing clinical trials here since 2008. The keratoconus is only going to get worse in, in the right eye. If they can stop it where it's at and prevent it from getting worse, and it may make it better. So the procedure is fairly straightforward. The epithelium is removed at the slit lamp, the device we use for examinations all the time. The patient is reclined, has riboflavin drops administered every few minutes for 30 minutes. We confirm that everything is ready to go for treatment, and then another 30 minutes of ultraviolet light combined with riboflavin, and then the patient is ready to go. I'm very excited that the USC Orosky Eye Institute has gravitated to this treatment so quickly. We're the first site in Los Angeles area to have the approved device and be able to offer the cross-linking treatment to our patients in the entire region. I just want to be able to go back to you know, not wearing glasses and, and, and being restricted by some of the things I would normally do much more vigorously without having the glasses than I normally would do. There's a significant amount of remodeling that happens in the cornea after this procedure. And all of the studies have shown that the, the vision, the thickness of the cornea, the regularity of the surface is at about its worst at one month after the procedure and then significantly improves after that. And by about two to three months, uh, there's usually an improvement. That positive change can continue even for years. This is the first and only treatment that can actually halt the progression of the keratoconus disease and in some cases partially reverse it.